Hey everyone, welcome back to the table. I'm Scott and this is Table Talk. This is where I go in and whatever hobby thing we're doing for the day, we just kind of hang out, talk about it. I share some tips along the way, uh, probably ramble and hopefully give you some tips. I hope, well, whatever. I am working on terrain today. So terrain is my plan. And what do I mean by terrain? Um, so some of you probably play Warhammer 40k. Some of you maybe play a different tabletop game like Age of Sigmar, um, Conquest, Star Wars Legion. There's a bazillion games that are out there. Not Those are not um, the only ones that are out there. But we are huge fans of Warhammer 40k. Um, if you've seen our wall, you notice I'm not in a normal spot because I need a little bit more room today. Um, but my normal spot is actually like right there. And then you have the whole wall of, you know, all the Warhammer figures and everything. So we're pretty invested into it. We enjoy it. We play competitively. Um, we're not the greatest, but we're also not crap either. So with that, there is kind of like a standard um, of, you know, Warhammer terrain that's out there. And you're supposed to set up the table a particular way. And they actually have a tournament rule uh, companion. This this is the latest one. They kind of come out with a new one each year. But this is the, the tournament companion. And in it, it outlines what the terrain sizes should be. So there's a, a page called Terrain Layouts. And they tell you in this section right here what the terrain sizes are. And then you're supposed to take those terrain sizes and and depending on you know what uh mission and all these other things you get there's different table layouts and they show you how to do them and there's two on each page so this is one layout and it uses these different pieces that you arrange them and put it in there and if you um if you watched our video where we go in about how we made the world eaters terrain um we just published this you know about a month ago or so and we basically crafted this terrain here to to go we crafted that terrain to be able to use and i got a whole bin of it we'll talk about that more in a minute um but i want to expand that out i want to expand our collection this is actually probably the best terrain we have in our collection and there's a couple things that make this terrain preferred makes makes it good in in my opinion um, one of the things that makes it really easy is it's easy to set up now easy to set up is kind of weird because there's a lot of definitions of it and so that's where this tournament companion comes in there's a prescribed size um, each of these pieces well it doesn't define height and all these types of things in a very particular way it does define the layout of the items. So, you know, what shape or size these things should be. So, you know, for example, this should be a square, this should be kind of like an L shaped. Um, they got like a U shaped terrain if you look at it from down below. And then if you were to look at the actual like pieces of terrain, that one in particular right there, you can see it's kind of U shaped. You can see some of the other shapes that are floating around out there. Um, so, easy to use in the context of being able to. to basically set it up quickly i want the shapes to be put together and the the bottoms of it need to be the prescribed size if they're not it becomes very difficult it's a pain in the butt to manage it and then you're kind of like proxying pieces and it's honestly it's kind of annoying because you're kind of making decisions um when you play 40k there's enough you have to think about reducing your cognitive load is definitely a thing you don't want to have to think about the things you want to have to think about so that's one of the reasons why I like this train. It's easy to use. I don't have to take it, the the bottom plate is connected to the actual terrain piece itself, which has its advantages, disadvantages, all that type of thing. But I can just simply put that down, bam, done, take the next piece, put it down, bam, done, and so on and so forth through this entire bin of terrain that I have right here, right? For the different various pieces um, of various different sizes. So I want to expand this collection, but I also have a whole bunch of other partially done terrain pieces that I also want to do too, because replicating this a thousand times is going to get kind of boring. From a tournament perspective, um, it is kind of easy. It makes it easier because then you know how to set it up, you know what it's going to be, it's consistent, that type of thing. Um, but from like us playing games here, maybe doing videos, 
gets kind of boring if it's the same exact thing all the time. So that's kind of where I'm at today. I have a few different things that are out there. So I have some 3D printed terrain like this that I'm going to fiddle with. And basically, um, I wanted to 3D print a bunch of this. So I got numbers on the bottom. I kind of basically test printed one of everything. And so I'm going to use these and put them on the plates and figure out what pieces are going to make the most sense to go onto the plates. Um, and then how many of what I need to print. So I just did some simple test prints a while ago. I want to finish and use this terrain out. So that'll be the thing. Um, I also have... Uh, Got a, a little bit more terrain. Got this bin full of terrain. That's another whole set, um, though similar to that. I might just use a bolt depending on how I feel about it. And then I have some more war, um, more Warhammer specific. It's not 3D printed. I actually, this is this terrain actually came with the Kill Team box set um, when they originally came out with Kill Team for Warhammer 40k, which is kind of like a small skirmish game. You don't need to have like hundreds of models on the table to play or in you basically have like 10 roughly 10 it varies i guess from like four to to i don't know 20 maybe max i think 20 max i don't know kill teams changed so much i haven't kept up with it um but there was sets that you could get that had models and, and those models you could use interchangeably between the warhammer 40k game and the warhammer um kill team game and there this isn't the only work. Um, this isn't the only tabletop game that has done that sort of thing. Another good example is Conquest. They have the Last Arguments at Kings, which is like a bigger tabletop game. Uh, if you've seen like play on tabletop, they like to do games of it. But they also have one called First Blood, which is a skirmish thing, and it's kind of like Kill Team. But anyways, not the point of the video. Not there but i did warn you i'm gonna ramble so here we are but anyways i have a whole box bin full of this terrain and this is our default terrain for a long time um, i got this whole bin and we're gonna go through that too um but you're gonna see when i put this on here um you're gonna see when i put this on here that this terrain doesn't necessarily fit on the on the plates prescribed by 40k or by uh, Games Workshop, who, you know, makes for Warhammer 40k. Which is kind of funny, because they have terrain you can buy, and it's included, and it doesn't fit on the stuff, the game system, or the, the, the layout that they have for competitive play. I don't know. I think it's a joke, but um, really, uh, the defense on that one is when you're assembling this, you don't have to necessarily do it in the configured configuration just like the instructions you could technically make this any way you want stretch the pieces out tweak them a little bit if you wanted to but um, when i built this i built it specifically for kill team and i built it specifically because i wanted to use it for um well kill team and at the time the rules were a little bit differently for competitive play so this made sense at the time here we are you know a couple years later and things have changed so surprise surprise but Either way, um, we're going to basically look at each one of those. We're going to figure out what we need, what we need to do to be able to make a complete set, um, meaning that we make it easy and simple that I have it where I just take it like this, put it down, bam, we're ready to go, and we don't have to fiddle with it. That is the plan. So fingers crossed, you know what I mean? We can make that happen. I know there's going to be some modifications. I know there's going to be some stuff we need to do, but that's what we're figuring out. Um, so for me to get started, um, oh, and one of the reasons why we preferred this terrain for the longest time is because it was the most painted terrain that we had. Um, when you be start playing a tabletop game, a lot of times you'll use boxes, cans, like whatever you can get your hands on. We started with boxes, and it would tape them up and kind of modify them, and then sp and then I evolved into spray painting them so they looked not all brown because you get tired of brown terrain really quick. And then you start using like other things like cans and bowls and whatever else that makes sense at the time. And then eventually we evolved into using some like of the kids toys. So they had some Roblox terrain and we used some of that and tried to jazz up the, the scenery, um, which is hilarious. <laughs> and we're going to, um, we're actually going to do a full terrain video at some point in time. 
where we go through all of the um we're going to go through and i'm going to show you how to make this specific terrain um and how it looks and how to you know like basically put this whole thing together um you can choose to do the grass whatever but it'll have the plans for it so you can make this exact terrain piece and what to do and how to make it so um that'll be a video that we're coming out with here soon but we're not coming out with it right this minute um so this is kind of like a sneak peek of it i guess i don't know whatever take, take it how you want but this terrain is actually painted so that's the thing that we really liked about it um that's that was the point so eventually we we worked our way up to it um there's some really awful terrain that we made way back when i'm not pulling it out right now because it's buried but it was like these lava rocks and it was basically a bunch of like foam stacked on top of each other uh it was really cool at the time looking at it now it's awful it's so bad i cringe so we're gonna i'm gonna do another video where i convert that over to like real terrain that we can use and make it look cool but um anyways so look for that video and then we'll provide the details um i also know i teased it when we we're talking about the world leaders terrain so hey we're gonna go through all that um we're gonna be going through this but what we need to do to do it is i actually am gonna take and make the plates and so what do i mean by making the plates so here is a good example um this plate here this is just a plexiglass sheet and this is the size that they need so one of the sizes is six inches i almost said feet six inches by 12 inches that's the size of this plate and there are um four of these and then there's also a five inch to that there's also a five inch one and I'll explain why you can see this one better in a second. But there's a 5-inch one, so this way by 10 inches. So there's that one, and there's two of those. And then there are six 4 by 6-inch uh, ones. And that's what you need to use. So before we get started, we're going to just cut the rest of these out. I have most of them cut out already. So I want to finish that up so I have a set that I can put these things down on. Um, so... Just talking really quick and how I'm doing these because the 40k players among you might be curious and how I, uh, what I'm using. So I'm just using some plastic, some um, plexiglass, some really thin. It is 0 0.04 inches thick. And my millimeters to inches is broken. I want to say that is two millimeters thick. I could be wrong. Maybe it's three millimeters thick. We're going to go with three millimeters because that sounds good. And I'm using my phone to record right now. Uh, one of the angles I want to be able to show you. So I can't look it up. So whatever. We'll figure that out later. I'll put a link down below so you can get it from Amazon. But a pack of this does not cost very much. It's like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, something like that. It has 10 cards in it. They're 12 inches by 12 inches. And the cool part about it is you can get two full sets out of a pack, which is really neat. Um, one of the things that, just like if you've ever bought plexiglass before from the hardware store or something like that, there is this tape here that is on it. It's like a protective film. And this protective film prevents it from getting scratched up because people like to use these for like picture frames and things like that. You know, maybe there's other things. I have no, no idea, but... Um, there's stuff on both sides. What I wish I would have done when I was using this just regularly on the table is kept one side of the film on. So then that makes it look a little less see-through. It's more opaque versus this that you can completely see through. Um, I guess they both were kind of hard to see through. Let's see if I can show you a little closer. Yeah, they both look like poo on the camera, but I can tell you, guarantee you, you can see them better in person. Let's actually switch the camera view really quick and see if you can see the difference. Um, okay, yes, you can. So perfect. So here is the full sheet that has half of it on it. Here's the other sheet, which you can see is kind of basically see-through for the most part. Um, up here, because the light's going through it, you can't really tell. But... Um, there is a difference between them, and you can almost tell the difference between the ones that are here that have something underneath them versus the ones here that you can almost see all the way through the bottom. So, anyways, take my word for it. So, what 
I wish I did is I only took off the stuff on one side of this versus both sides. It made it a little bit easier to see. Um, the other thing that we experiment with when doing this is we actually took like a marker and then we we went and did the edges of them like this, but you ruin your marker really, really quick with it. Uh, there's a couple other ones that I thought about doing. I don't know. But if you were to buy something from like Grey Mather Gaming, all they do is the same exact thing. They take thin plastic like this. I think it's a little bit, might be a little bit thicker depending on what you get. They basically make their circles or whatever the, the things are that they're making. And then they'll take and they'll have it edging around them. There's probably some machine process that makes them look a lot more professional than what we're doing. Um, but if you're just doing things at home, and heck, even if you're doing this for like a bazillion tables at a tournament, even if they aren't like perfect, they're still going to look pretty good. So, um, that's the way that works. But yeah, these are these things work really well. We like using them. So, anyways, um, what I'm gonna do now? Let's go ahead and switch back over. And switch back over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. I'm just gonna cut these out. If I was smart, I would have been rambling at the same time that I was cutting, but you know, gotta figure out the pace of these things a little bit. So if you're still listening and hanging out, um, we're gonna try to do these each week. Um, there's no reason why we can't. Oh, save these extra little strips if you're doing this at home, because if you're doing some type of resin pour, you can put like hot glue on this and put it up to like an edge of something. So like pretend, you know, you put it on an edge and you can use this to like, basically screen in the thing and use it to, to basically to build um, a block so when you pour in your resin it's it sits i use these all the time so i'm saving them because usually after you use them once they get kind of warped and you don't want to use them again so you gotta pitch them so i save my scraps um, but if you're not doing resin pours then don't save them or you know whatever 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 brings you joy i guess so all right, we have six of these, which is what we need. We're going to lay those out in a little bit. Um, the other one I have is I need my five inches by 10 inches. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't. I took them both off because it kind of like it's easy to rub these things and they get worn out. So I don't know. Maybe I made the right call initially. I have no idea. Um, one of the things that drove me to using this is one, the cost using this, this plexiglass was the cost, um, because it's pretty cheap to be able to come up with a set of these two, they were see-through and three, they were thin enough. I didn't have to use a razor blade to cut them. I could just cut them with a thick, sturdy pair of scissors. So that made that a lot easier. So I didn't have to think about it. All right. Here's my two five by tens. I have one four by six already. I'm gonna cut another one. There we go. It says I need six of them. Though looking to the map, I can't think of a single map where I need to use all six. There's four there. There is four there. Four there, four, 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 four. Why in the world they tell you to make six of them things? I've never done six. Oh, that's because I got the numbers wrong. I only need four of them. I was mixing up the numbers. That's why you got instructions to tell you what to do. It's easy to get mixed up. So anyways, I need a couple more of these. Um, so let's just trace a couple really quick. Then we can cut them out. I tend to just trace them like this. If they're off by a hair or two, it's not the end of the world. I'll cut more of these. You can see I got a giant stack of this stuff here. Got a giant stack of these. And I'm planning on cutting up more. In fact, I am probably going to be cutting up 
uh, we're doing sets. We are working on getting a couple sets of tournament terrain. That'll actually be part of the the point of the video that we are going to do for the terrain building to show you all how because we're gonna basically take the technique we used when we made the corn. Um, we made the corn table. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Need them anymore. You're welcome for the long, loud noise. Um, but basically we're going to take the corn table and we're going to industrialize it. So I'm going to make, I'm going to start with making 20 sets of the terrain. And I'm going to do that and show you how I do it, how I make them, what I learned, all that type of thing. Um, to make sure that, or just to be able to show you all how to do it, whatever. And then we're going to theme out the sets of the terrain to be for each 40k faction. We're going to try to theme out the sets. So like how I did the corn one here, I'm going to do another one. This is probably a little more sophisticated than the normal corn stuff. I'll probably do a little bit more like blood or oriented stuff versus like the warp gate situation. But whatever. <clears throat> um, before I lose the thought, if you're if you're still hanging out, I know we haven't published a regular video for a little bit. Um, we are not abandoning that. We're planning on making more. I know I've talked about the um, making the terrain video. That's happening. We're going to attempt to publish this weekend, um, the week of November, uh, the weekend of November 2024, um, the seventh. I think the seventh is Saturday, Sunday. Anyways, that weekend. Around that area, we're going to try to publish it. My hope is Saturday morning, but it is possible it might not get published until Sunday morning. So we'll see. Um, is what it is. But we're going to do one how to make tiles. So the bottom of these bases, all this tile that's down here and the tile work that we did in the other video, um, we have what we need for that. And I'm just working and editing that out. And then we're going to try to get on that every other week cadence again with the regular like hobby videos. But we're still going to maintain and try to do one of these every week if we can. Just like basically table talk. I'm always doing hobbies. At least once a week I know I'm doing hobbies. And if not, this is a good reason to do it. So, all right. I guess that was your little impromptu self-motivated ad. All right. So our next step is I'm going to actually lay out these terrain pieces. And then um, I have my print list that coincides with this numbers that I have here or this it is on my list itself for the city rooms. So that list right there. And then I'm basically going to mark up what I need and then I'll 3d print the extra pieces that I need. So, but let's start with this 3d printed terrain and then we will evolve into start with the 3d printed terrain and then we'll evolve into to the other, the Games Workshop terrain. Uh, we got a few different sets, so we can do it. Um, plus, not only that, we can 3D print some of the Games Workshop terrain to supplement it. Um, I try to support Games Workshop and uh, like other companies. I like to buy this stuff from them if I can. But sometimes it just makes more sense, especially um, you know, like when their terrain doesn't fit and things like that. I can print the pieces that I need versus having to buy five extra sets to make something work that should really work with two sets or three sets or something. So, um, you know, that sort of thing, you, you blow the line of what you feel comfortable with, but I'm going to 3d print a bunch of, uh, terrain that's going to look very similar to the GW stuff. So we can use that to supplement. All right. I'm going to go overhead view, uh, cause we're going to be laying things out. We're going to organize this thing, get it sorted out. out of the way. The best way to do this is I'm going to be setting these up like this. There's kind of a prescribed method for them and how you do them. Those and then these. Now these ones here, these, these ones that are the four inches by six inches, they're pretty simple in the way that you don't have to do a lot of complicated stuff with them. Technically, it's just a place. Uh, it's kind of just like a marker. 
that if you are standing behind it, you could you get like cover in the game. The pieces for these look like this. So it's very simple. It's just some grass. But the important part is whatever this is sitting on top of it is less is two inches or less. And it matters for the game and how they do things. So we'll uh, we're gonna abide by that because them's the rules. Um. So the second thing we're gonna do here. I kind of like the idea of putting like some cool these cool steps, these cool steps, and putting some of these on here. I might do that. I don't know. City room six. Those are pretty cool. Uh, city rooms oh two f two. So it looks like that goes on top of there. So they usually name them pretty smart. So you can. Uh, they usually name them pretty smart, so you can easily put them on. O2, F2, O3, F2. This is O3, F1, O3, F2. This one kind of print failed, but whatever, it works enough to get an idea of what we need to do. So you can kind of see, we ignored the failed print side. That's kind of cool. Windows, rooms. Cool stuff. Uh, that's just a regular piece. That's just a regular piece. And how do I know? Because it's just City Runes 01. It doesn't have a floor on it. That's their numbering scheme, I believe. Yeah, that's their numbering scheme. Here's another piece. So we got a lot of cool little pieces we can use. Here's the rest of that piece that goes underneath the bottom. Devs. Here is 0303. This goes on top. So ultimately, that's what that looks like. Just kind of neat. I guess you want to see it that way. What else? I don't. I think this is going to be one of those one-off terrain pieces that I do, or one-off things, and I'm probably not going to replicate it because honestly, it's kind of a pain in the butt already, and I'm not even. I'm not even printing it yet. I got this cool piece right here. Um, I kind of like it. Looks neat. I think I tried print putting two of these next to each other. So all right. that is all the pieces we have. And I forget what vendor I got these from. I'm going to say it's Taloxi. Taloxi. Um, I'll put a link to theirs down below if that's correct. If I'm wrong, I'll put the right one. Um, pretty cool terrain. I liked it. I thought it would be fun. I could use it for D and D. I could use it for you know, uh, if I'm playing Conquest or something. Have some cool runes. It's always neat to have runes. You're not. They're probably not going to go to waste. They're likely not going to go to waste. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to figure out what we need here. Let's start with, and each of these pieces are kind of prescribed in a particular way. Um, I have a, this is my my sheet. Sorry, my camera's a little bit upside down. I have a sheet that I outlined all of the pieces on. So these are all the pieces I need to make my terrain. But more importantly, I have this cool layout here. I have this cool layout here in this, this section. And I'll, uh, I'll, sh I'll share a picture. This will be part of the tournament, or when I show you how to make the train. But this layout right here shows you what the sizes are and what they need to look like for the train itself. So I'm going to follow these, basically the L's that work. I found all the, the common pieces between all the layouts and that type of thing. All right. So this is the tallest one. And so two of these are going to be the tallest ones. And so the magic question is, if I do these, and so part of it too, because I'm printing this, I can actually size it down a little bit if I need to. And I might, I might size it down just a little bit. Um, so it actually fits on the plate all the way. I guess if it overhangs a hair, it's not the end of the world, but, um, you know, whatever. So actually the way this works in... Um, the way this is supposed to work is it's got to be a horseshoe shape. And we're going to pull out our 
We're gonna pull out our piece for an example. So you can see we got the horseshoe shape here. It doesn't follow exactly um, like perfectly to the edge. It's inset a little bit. So my guess is this is gonna be a little bit too big. The other thing, and this, this is something we'll get into before, the first floor of this should be 3.5 inches. And the floor on this one is four inches. So what I think I can do is I can reduce the size of this one by a half, uh, enough where it makes the floor a half inch slower. And I could print two of them and put them, and I inversed one of them, so one's this way, one's this way, then it would be a giant building room kind of thing. Um, I think that would work. I think that would work. So, all right, we got our first thing we want to do I realize that I'm probably not going to be able to use this terrain the way it is I'm going to probably reprint a whole bunch of this stuff which honestly kind of sucks but we'll uh we'll go from there okay this is city runes city runes 03 this is going to be 03 01 through 03, and we're going to reduce four inch height to 3.5 inch height. I feel like I'm making more work for myself. So, depending on how this goes, we might just need to abandon this all together. We'll see. We're going to look at the other box and find out. All right, so I think that'll work for both of these. And in verse. I, I started this thought before, but one of the things I need to figure out it, or want to do is not just have the same terrain every time. So while this terrain is pretty cool, I really don't want to play on it every single time. It's going to get boring really quick. So like the terrain that I had here, this terrain was really cool, and we liked it for about five, six games, and then when you're using it every single time, it gets boring. You don't like it. The way that works, um, it's the way you do things. And that's the way it happens. So, um, <clears throat> so we're working on let's see what else. So the other one we have to have is a bigger piece. I think we can use this no problem. And I have this one's height set to four inches according to my measurements. There is particular rules of the game that there is, it's something called plunging fire. And if something is a particular height or size or whatever the deal is, if it's a certain height, then um, you get to use that plunging fire um, rule to do things. So this should actually work out pretty well. The only downside to this, this really kind of needs to go all the way to the end. Um, so maybe we can do, this is the hard part. Like if you do too much there, it doesn't really, kind of sort of doesn't work all the way. So, all right, well, I think this will work. Um, I think this will work. We can do this. I almost wonder if I can like stretch the piece out a little bit more. This piece doesn't fit on that piece or else it would work pretty well. I'm quickly deciding that I don't think this is going to work the way I think it's going to work. And we might just have to abandon for the sake of having to reprint everything. But I'm stubborn and we're just going to keep going with it. So I think this is going to work for the next ones, which are two sets that are going to go from here all the way to here. Um, eh, kind of works, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, next one is going to be 12 by 6. This is going to be a two level. The problem with this, these are not two levels. They're only one level. So um, I do kind of like this. I think this would work. It makes it pretty easy. The only downside is that they don't have a piece to stand on, and it makes it kind of hard. It also isn't the right height. Um, it isn't the right height between things. Okay, yeah, I kind of don't like these. I think we're going to abandon this part of the project. You're seeing it live, peeps. You're seeing it live. Or, well, recorded, but I'm doing this live. <laughs> All right, this terrain is going to be cool terrain to do just for 
probably like D and D or maybe some type of conquest stuff, but it is probably not going to work out. However, exception to that is potentially this, which I can already tell this is way too big. But it was for from a different one, and it was the same scheme where it has like rune four three. I tried out some wash on it, and it didn't work. Um, this is three two. This is rune one. This is four two. So that's three. Three. Remember this one's weird, it's backwards. This is just rune two. I don't know if it goes to anything. Rune one. This is three one. Um, so following the same scheme, this is like way too big and not long enough. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to abandon all of this. I will do a cool thing where we can just use it for random runes for D&D. &D. And that's that. Because it is not going to work with Warhammer unless I reprint the whole thing. These are just really cool, aren't they? I really like the way the walls work. Look. I really like the way the walls work. And they got the cool foliage that goes up the side of it. Oh well. It's a neat idea, but I don't think it's going to work without a bunch of modifications that I'm not planning on doing. There's other things I can do. Now, I can take part of the stuff and integrate it into the other th pieces, which is definitely a viable thing. But not something we're going to do right now. So, I'm going to go over here for the moment. I could probably make it work, but I'm not that motivated. My goal right now is to kind of reduce the projects I have floating around, not create a ton more work. So, yeah. All right, let's go into the GW terrain because this should be really close. We actually use this for a really long time. And it's somewhat close. So um, one of the things that it isn't close with is it doesn't work for... Um, I like the different angles that we need to have, but worry about that. Explain what's going on here in just a second. Yeah, because part of the idea is I want these bins. I want to put, this is what you'd normally do in a tournament. You would have a bin, probably not this crappy bin. You'd have something a little nicer. You have a bin, you put all your terrain in the bin or a particular table. And then if somebody needed to, uh, you, you could put it away or you take it and you just have it set up and away you go. All right, first things first. We have the one that's kind of partial. This one works in the middle. It's a little bit deeper than it needs to be, but that is perfectly fine. So those two, two pieces work well for that. Looks like we are missing part of our terrain for something. It is very interesting. And... Okay, had a piece that broke off. It happens. All right, so we have our two pieces that are like that. And then we have two more pieces that need to be longer. And they need to go like that. So we're going to put these in here. And these should work just fine. They go mostly the way there, which is what we want. So we're going to run with that. Perfect. So we use this specific terrain for a long time, so I'm expecting it to be pretty close. Pretty close. Let's see if we figured it out 100%, so probably a little closer than expected. All right, so the next piece is gonna be on here, but there's gonna be like a two inch. It's almost gonna be kind of like that. 
if you will. So this piece works fine. Um, the downside is this piece doesn't work because it's the wrong way, but we it actually works perfectly for this piece. So that actually works. So I kind of need another one of these. Honestly, I don't even remember what set I got this from. Um, and I don't know what set I got that from. But both of those pieces work, and I don't have any more terrain in there. But I might have some over in the other bin. All right, looks like we're going to supplement with maybe some orc terrain. Try that. Um, supplement some work to run. So let's do this piece and this piece. And then we have this piece and this piece. So these one these two kind of go not into the abandoned pile, but into the we're not gonna use those normally pile. Okay, and then the other thing that we have going on is that there's supposed to be like a two inch piece that's floating around down here. So we can kind of do this just to kind of, usually what we do is we do something like this where we just kind of put the piece flat like that. So it looks like it's two inches, kind of works. And then We have all these little partial pieces. Um, this is technically supposed to be flat as well, but it would be perfectly fine. You don't necessarily have to put something on it. Um, and then we're going to have these little four plates that are going to do stuff. Usually we just kind of put like a little rune on there some way, somehow. Like this. Let's do this. We want shorter ones because it's going to make the most amount of sense. The taller ones are going to be too tall. So let's go with mm, that looks like a piece of terrain from something else. Let's go with Go with these. They're a little bit bigger, but that's all right. Okay, there we go. Didn't have to do anything. These are just neat. I like the fading that's happening on these. They look kind of cool. They need, um, really what they need is a touch up, some of the details put on them, and they need a dry brushing really. But um, I think it did it with, uh, so this is a good one. You, this one looks, Pretty good because it has all the stuff on it but what it really needs is a dry brush of the a color and then they hit the silver on here and then probably put a little extra bits for like the skulls and stuff like that we are not um we're not there so we the only way this is going to work is i had to supplement it with this other kill team terrain which is like orc terrain that kind of makes it neat it's like imperial industrial on top of the other things. And I guess they do have, it's gonna be orc terrain. I might as well have some cool stuff like this. These are just like these like, these piles and those can go on. And we do these two instead of doing these two bigger ones we're gonna do these two pieces is it work ones so that way the orcs get their um the orcs kind of get their shenanigans going on too 
So I think that works. I think that works perfectly fine. Um, let's shitty barricades. Got these little tiny barricades. We'll put those up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get rid of them. That's stupid. Okay. Um, I think that works. The goal was to get a full set um, based on everything we have here, and we have that. So that works for me. I guess that's where we want to be for this. Um, so it's a pretty good idea of how the train looks. It's not the most exciting. Again, this compared to, um, you know, you got this piece here that's on there. It's kind of bulky. It's kind of big. You know, something like this versus something like this. If you were to put them next to each other, they both look kind of neat. I think this one looks a little more interactive and cooler, but maybe I'm just prejudiced because I built that one. Um, it's got a little bit bigger profile, but I actually use the same bases on the bottom here. You can kind of see all the foam and stuff on the bottom. So anyways, that kind of works for the terrain. I like it. I think it'll work. And then we got a clean set that if we wanted to do something else. Um, so yeah, we're going to work on the rest of this terrain here. We're going to do some of this and come up with different versions for different factions. Um, that'll be a video we're coming out with here pretty quick. I'm actually going to work on brainstorming it this weekend. But I'm going to guess Sunday going through. I might turn that into a table talk of just saying, okay, what should it be for each of the factions and get some of your ideas? Um, I definitely might do that, but... We'll see. I'm trying to not overlap where I'm stealing, like I'm repeating myself on the 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 table talk. Go ahead and switch here. I'm I'm trying to make sure that I'm not repeating myself on the table talk. Um, again on the uh, you know the videos that we're doing, but you know I it's gonna happen. There's no there's no way around it. <laughs> we're gonna get cameos of projects all the time so but anyways uh i know this is kind of silly but we need to figure it out you get a little intro to how people think about terrain and the sizes and all that type of thing some of the methods with the plexiglass so um good luck and if you got questions and you're trying to figure this out let me know i'm going to go into a little bit more detail when i do to publish that video in a couple weeks slash month and um, just work on your hobby stuff and keep going and until next time when we see you at the table